Okay, so in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Inkscape to create a wireframe globe similar to what you see here on my screen. And doing anything 3D related in Inkscape can be a real challenge. And it's one area where Inkscape really falls short in comparison to Illustrator because doing anything in 3D in Illustrator is a lot easier and more seamless. For example, creating something like this would be much more automated in Illustrator. You would just have to, it would be a matter of clicking a few buttons. But in Inkscape, they don't, it doesn't have the kind of features that Illustrators has, unfortunately. So we have to go about drawing something like this manually. And this is not perfect by any means, but this is my own interpretation of a wireframe globe. So if, if you have a better way of doing what, doing this, then please, by all means, feel free to share. This is just my own interpretation of it right here. So let's close that out and get started. First thing we're going to do is open up the Align and Distribute menu with that button. Make sure we have Last Selected Chosen from that drop-down. And then we'll go to uh, the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu and open that up. From the View menu, make sure you have Custom Selected. And Zoom, make sure you're zoomed in at one-to-one. -one. And the first thing we're going to do is just create a perfect circle on our keyboard. So select the Circle tool and hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and create a perfectly round circle, kind of like that. And let's come up here to the Fill tab and let's click the X button to turn that off. And then we'll come over to the Stroke Paint button. We'll click this blue button to turn that on. Stroke Style, make sure you have that set at 1. We want that to be a one-point stroke. And then we're going to come back to our arrow. And up here where it says Effect, um, when scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion. We're going to turn that off. So if you don't have, already, if you don't have that turned off, make sure you turn that off before we do what we're about to do next. So the next thing we'll do is we're going to click this lock button in the middle here and we're going to make the width and the height 300. But since we have that lock turned on, all we have to do is change the width and it'll automatically change the height. So go ahead and type in, erase that, whatever that number is, just type in 300 and hit enter. And as you can see, the height will change to 300 as well. And then we can turn that lock icon off. We don't need that anymore. And then we could take this take this circle right here and we can right click this and go to duplicate and we're going to make the width of this 220 and then we're going to make the height we're going to change the height to 65 and hit enter and then select them both by clicking and dragging over both of them we'll center that up on the vertical axis and then align the top edges kind of like that and what we'll do is I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and use the mouse wheel to zoom in. I'm going to press down on the mouse wheel to pan the page around. I'm going to take this, this top circle right here. I'm going to hold control and I'm going, to, I'm going to click and drag this down until it's just inside of the circle, kind of like that. You want to make sure it's inside of the circle. You don't want this sticking out a little bit like that or else it's not going to look right. Make sure it's inside of the circle like that. Then I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate. Click and drag over both of them and click this button down here in the bottom right that says align top edges of objects to bottom right edge of the anchor. Go ahead and click that. And let's uh, click this one right here. Let's right click this and go to duplicate. Click and drag over both of them. Press that uh, align key again, same thing. And then we'll do this one more time. We'll click on this one and duplicate this one. And then we'll align the edges of that as well. Now let's take all four of these ovals right here. Make sure you have all four of them selected. And let's group them together and hold shift on the keyboard and click on the circle behind it. And let's just make sure we have it centered up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And then we can ungroup everything and click off of it to deselect everything. Now let's take this circle right here, this oval, and let's right click this and go to duplicate. We're going to go to Stroke Paint. We're going to give this uh, from the HSL tab. We're going to give this a red stroke or any color you'd like just to differentiate it from the, from the other ovals. Then we'll hold Control and click and drag this down to about the center. Between these two, we want this red one to be perfectly between those two, somewhat between those two, and we can make sure they're perfectly aligned by selecting all three of them and then going to th this button right here. Make vertical gaps between objects equal. We'll click on that, and that, then they will be perfectly spaced apart. And we can click off of that to deselect everything. Now let's take this red one. Let's right-click this and go to Duplicate. And let's click over those two copies. And let's align those bottom edges like that. 
click off of it to deselect and click this one right click duplicate click and drag over those two so you have them both selected and align them like that and then we can click and drag over this whole thing and go to the stroke paint tab and we can change the color of that back to black now what we're going to do next is we're going to go to each one of these ovals and we're going to size them up so they fit inside of that circle so let's take this second one this top one already fits inside the circle we're going to take this second one hold control and shift on the keyboard and let's scale this up until it fits inside of the circle kind of like that we'll do the same thing to the next one scale this up until it fits inside that circle do that to the next one hold control and shift scale it up we'll click the next one control shift click and drag to scale it up and one more and click that one Scale that up so it's inside the circle. And we can press 1 on the keyboard to zoom out. Now let's take this big circle in the background. Let's right-click that and go to Duplicate. And let's move this over here. Let's make the width of that 200. And then let's right-click that and go to Duplicate. And then make that the width of that one 70. Just type in 70. And we can click and drag over both of those. Center them up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And then you could hold shift on the keyboard and click on this circle up top here. And we could center them up on the vertical and horizontal axis. And as you can see, we're pretty much done. You can click and drag over this and group it together. Tilt it up to the side a little bit. And that's pretty much how you can make a very simple wireframe globe in Inkscape. Again, it's not perfect. It's not the best looking globe out there. But um, as far as I know, this is about as good as I can do in Inkscape. So uh, if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll help you out. Thanks for watching.